Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms, and today we're going to rewire my 1957 Ford 800 series tractor. We're going to replace the ignition switch. We're going to add a fuse panel that's going to be energized by a relay, and then we're just going to go ahead and uh, clean everything up. At this point here, I've already removed all the existing wiring, and you can see this has already had a 12 volt conversion performed on it with the uh, Delco alternator here, which is a single wire alternator and removal of the air cleaner is necessary in order to access the starter solenoid, which is the 12 volt variant of the starter solenoid. Originally these tractors were wired for 6 volt positive ground systems. I'm going to go ahead and point out the important parts of the system for you, for those who may not know. This is your alternator, this is your starter, and this is your starter solenoid. Of course the battery, the ballast resistor for the ignition coil, the distributor, We've removed the battery, and now we're just going to go ahead and clean our terminals. Now it's clean and ready for service. Instead of detailing how each wire is made, I'm just going to go ahead and do an example one for you. And in this example, we're going to go from the coil here to the ballast resistor. And I'm using green as my color for the ignition side. So what I would do is, is just come out with enough wire here. And you can see this thing's tied into my oil pressure line here for the OP gauge, which still functions. So I'm just going to basically make it long enough to reach here. And I'll be able, instead of using E-tape, I'll just use loom and just loom around the OP line with the conductor next to it. So, we just measure out our length. And cut the wire to length. And we'll just take our wire we just cut here, and we'll go ahead and prep it. I pull a centimeter of the strippers off. And you'll see how these work. These are really good strippers here. And then we're going to need one blue loop connector for a number 10 ring, which will be like this right here. Slide that on. Then we're going to take our crimpers. crimp our connection. Then we're going to heat shrink it. So I'll go ahead and take our piece of heat shrink tubing here and we can slide this over that one just like that and shrink it up. Now see, doesn't that look better? Alternator wire and the original one had a 20 amp circuit breaker. I just used a fuse. I can upgrade the fuse much easier and I can repair it in the field if necessary without having to break the harness down. And this essentially runs from your alternator terminal back to your starter solenoid. So let me loom this up and get this installed. Okay, we can see the routing runs from the terminal on the alternator in loom along the block here where it's going to run down here in proximity to the governor, which we don't want to interfere with the governor, so we just route it back behind the solenoid and it's going to connect with the constant battery terminal on this side of the starter solenoid. Okay, here's our keyed ignition switch. We have the yellow wire, which is fused, is what feeds the switch. The white wire, when the switch is turned on, feeds the ignition side of a relay, and that relay will control a fuse panel. And the red wire 
will control the switch side of the starter solenoid. So that's on a momentary position. So whenever you turn the key to that position, it engages the solenoid or closes the solenoid and allows the starter to operate. And when you release the key, since it's momentary, it springs back and opens that circuit. This is the master fuse box feed. It runs from the battery side of the starter solenoid and on the other end we'll go to a 30 amp relay. Okay, here's where we're at. We've got our alternator wired. It runs up to the battery side of the starter solenoid. We have our master battery cable hooked up. We have our feed for the master fuse panel relay. We have our ignition switch feed that all goes to our master battery. We have our switch side for our starter. And we have our ignition switch tied in, but it's not live yet. But that's where the original switch would be at. But it's got a momentary in it, like I said. So that'll be replacing the uh, foot switch that was over here by the shifter. This is the original starter switch on this generation of tractors and what this does is, is this provides closure from ground and the starter solenoid in these is a ground independent or a chassis independent solenoid so providing closure for this would allow the tractor to start. This also functions as a neutral safety switch as you can see right here we're in neutral and you can see we get full contact whereas if we're in gear you can see that we don't have enough distance to provide closure. And this is my DC distribution panel I built. And you can see here we have a ground lead that's going to go to the chassis next to the battery box. And then you have with these two quarter inch bolts here, this is going to mount inside the cowling. On the back side, I have the master relay, which is this 30 amp relay. And then I have a 10 gang fuse box, so I can run the ignition on one. When I add lights, I can add lights on the other. I can add a voltmeter here, and then I have seven additional circuits I can use. This isn't watertight, but it is water resistant. And this is the same thing you would use for in building a DC distribution system for a, a race car or for a vessel or an ATV or anything such as that. So when the tractor is sitting still, it's not drawing any current. When we turn on the ignition switch, which energizes this terminal here, it causes the coil to close, and then it brings closure between your constant battery lead and the fuse block lead. And this allows your electrical circuits to operate. And then when you turn the ignition switch off, it de-energizes the coil, which it removes power from this terminal here, and it returns it to an open state. to use two quarter inch bolts to affix it to the sheet metal and you can see every all the wiring is tucked away and here's our distribution panel I've got this nice little recess here in the cowling that I tucked it into it protects it from the weather and keeps it out of sight yet easy to reach if I need to service anything Originally the tractor was equipped with an ammeter and someone had replaced it with a voltmeter that was inoperative. And I've got this other voltmeter here that I had laying around so we're going to go ahead and pop that in there too. Okay, we are all tightened up and ready for live testing. Okay, let's go to ignition, turn the switch on. Good there. Time to start. Now to fix the exhaust. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comps. Till next time.